Good morning, people, um, holy ones, and I'm so glad to be back from holiday. I visited my mom and dad a little bit, and I believe you have missed me. I hope so. And yes, yeah, so if you have your Bible, you may turn with me to Genesis um, 1, and I'm going to read to you um, something that is always um, dear to my heart and you will see yeah, waters waters and uh, many years ago God um, opened the prophetic words of waters to me and explained it to me now if you will go back uh, maybe three weeks ago four weeks ago you have seen there a message of divided I call it divided when God came and he divided water and water and um, I know there were many questions about that because I said that um, Moses came and he saw a prophetic uh, word of Genesis and we read it only as natural events occurring when God created, you know, the heavens and the earth. And, um, but that was actually a two, um, how can I say it now, a uh, two things it was a word of knowledge um, but it was also a word of prophecy of Jesus Christ that would come and do specific things and um, yes yeah, so there's a lot of questions but I believe uh, I believe that it will be answered um, in my sermon this morning so Genesis 1 verse 2 I just want to read that I'm only going to read verse 2, 3, 6, and 7. And um, I believe it will help you. So it says that now, I want you to hear the words. It says, now the earth was formless and empty. Now very important is, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then this is now in our Bible. So, in a timeline, I want to draw this to you. Um, I'm going to draw from here. I want you to, to see this. Now, there is the cross, and here is us. And we are living in 2021. All right. Today, um, it's the 7th February 2021. Now, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then... It is all about Christ and the generation of men. And Christ, the word, becoming flesh. And prophets that prophesy of him that will come. Him that will come. I want to tell you, you must understand this now. Very, very important. This is not the beginning of time. This is the beginning of the plan that we are now in. All right, so the Bible is a manual for mankind now. And we must read the Bible to see how we can implement things and uh, started to know things about it. Before this was God. And in our time, if we will look to time, it is millions and millions and billions um, of of years so our Bible does not start here our Bible starts with here with a manual with a plan with prophets trying to explain this time of mankind in a space of time so before in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth was God and we do not know anything about it we do not know anything that happened we do not know anything so when we read the Bible it's all about I want to know nothing amongst you except Christ and him being crucified so the Bible wants to explain Christ Jesus Christ to us open the word to us and see how mankind started off in this phase of time and we walk with Christ and can be part of Christ because we are the body of Christ so it says now the earth was formless and empty 
Darkness was over the surface of the deep. I want you to hear that word, deep. Darkness was on the deep. So first go and see divided. If you do not go back, if you want, you can uh, listen to this and then go and listen to the divided. That message of mine. So it says, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So listen to the words because we are going to explain prophetic language now. It says darkness was on the deep. Alright, so there is deep and there are darkness. I'm going to write that down, that you can see it. Darkness is, all right, darkness um, was over the surface of the deep. So here's the deep, and darkness was over the surface. There's the deep, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. But then the Spirit of God hover over the Spirit of God hover over the waters. Alright, so the deep is waters. Can you see that? Alright, because it says darkness was over the deep, comma, the Spirit hover over the waters. So the deep is water. If you do not trust me now, just wait. I'm going to go on. And then you will say, I, oh, okay, that's it. Yes, I can see it. All right. But just believe me. All right. So the deep is water. All right. It's water. So first darkness and emptiness. And then spirit. All right. Then spirit over the deep so and then it says and uh, verse 3 and god says let there be light and there was light so it, so it's about deepness and it's about water there's darkness or the spirit cover it and then god says light so where's the light now the light is on the water or the deep because there was no light all right so i want you to see darkness was over the deep and now god says light now the deep is full of light remember that word deep very important all right then it says verse 6 and god said let there be an expansion between waters to separate water from water. So the moment when we say water separate from waters, that means there's two kinds of water. So there is a deep or a water. First darkness was over it. All right. Then the spirit over over the deep. And God says, let there be light. And light came on that water and then god separate water from water so now there's two types of waters and there's a separation between waters and waters okay you see it and it says um verse seven so god make the expanse and separate the waters under the expanse from the waters above and it was so now you've got two things. Here is the deep. It is darkened. The Spirit come and hovered. Even when the Spirit hovered, God says, let there be light. So now light is on the waters. And then God says, let us make a separation. Now separation between the waters and the waters. The waters of the heavens and the waters of the earth. 
There is a separation between water and water. All right. So, um, and it was so. That was Genesis. All right. Moses prophesied about Jesus Christ and about mankind seeing darkness upon mankind. And God will come and send the Spirit. I will promise the Holy Spirit to come to you. All right. You are the deep. Man are the deep. Man are the waters. And darkness was upon the mankind. And God came with his spirit. It hovered over the mankind, the deep, the waters. And then there was a separation between waters and waters. Between the believing and the unbelieving. Let's read. What prophet is prophesying, then you will say, oh, I can see that. All right, so Isaiah 51, verse 4, 15. 50, 51, verse 15. Isaiah. But I am the Lord thy God, that divided the sea. God divided the sea. So the moment when you divide sea, that is water, then there's two types of water or sea. Whose waves roar. All right, so God says, I divide the sea. All right, and his waves roar. So God divided the sea, but God's waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Lord of hosts. Host means many. The Lord of hosts is his name. All right. Now I want you to hear closely because when a prophet like Isaiah said something, he speaks of mankind, of people. Listen to the words. And I have put my words in thy mouth. So listen, verse 15 speaks now, I'm the Lord, I divide the sea. The next verse says, I have put my words in thy mouth. It is the explanation of what I said. Because how we speak is, we will say something and then we will explain what we are saying. We will not say something like, uh, the milk is sour in the next verse, um, in the Bible, you know, my cars with El Petro. It has nothing to do with each other. When Bible speaks, when prophet speaks, they try to explain what they have said because they are called by God to say to mankind something. Now, so, verse 16, I have put my words in thy mouth, means it is something to do with the separation of the seas. Because verse 15 says, I'm the Lord of many, and I separate seas. I separate water. There's two kinds of seas now. My sea roareth. Listen, I will put words in thy mouth. I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand. I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand. So first there was a deep and the waters and darkness was on it. But God's spirit came upon the deep and hover over the deep and the water or mankind and what is another image of that you are in god's hands now because it says i have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand it's another word of god's war spirit hover over water i cover thee i put my words in thy mouth I cover thee, that I may plant the heavens. Listen now. I want you to hear what Isaiah is saying. Listen to the form and the words. He says, I have put words in thy mouth. But he start off by, I will divide the seas. Then it was says, I put my words in thy mouth. I have you. In the palm of my hands. 
in the shadow of my hand, that I might plant the heavens. What? I thought God has planted the heavens before this. Now God has put words in thy mouth to plant the heavens and lay foundations of the earth. I thought first in the beginning God laid the heavens, made the heavens and the earth. And in the sixth day he made man. Now Isaiah says, no, wait, wait. I've put words in my mouth, in thy mouth. And I've covered thee this darkness, this water that has darkness over it. I will come with my hand or my spirit and I will cover thee. I will separate water from water. There will be two types of water. And then it says, I will put my spirit in a mouth so that I may plant the heavens. Now we know that God stays in the heavens. And we are dwelling places of God. So God placed his words in us as the deep in the water so that the heavens can declare the words of God and lay foundations on the earth and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. Thou art my people. So thou art my people is the explanation of what I've said so far. Thou art my people. Psalm 124 verse 2. I want you to hear this. Psalm 124 verse 2. If the Lord had not been on our side when men attack. Alright. If the Lord was not on our side when men attack. Listen. Us. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. What is men that is attacking us? I'm so glad that the Lord is with me. I'm so glad that the Lord is with me. If the Lord was not with me, men would have attacked us. But listen what he says. What is men? Listen, he says, Psalm 124 verse 2, 4 and 5. If the Lord was not with, on our side, when men attacked us, the flood would have engulfed us. The flood. The torrent would have swept over us. A torrent is a water flood. Would sweep over us. But praise God. And the raging waters would have swept us away. What water? The waters that were divided. Yeah. Because God brought light to the deep and hovered with his spirit over waters and the deep. And then he brought separation between waters and waters. Between the believing and the unbelieving. God's waters roareth. The raging waves is men attack us but God is with us the raging waves would have swept over us 2 Samuel 2 verse 4 and 5 I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised so shall I be safe from my enemies from who? The enemies when I call on the name of the Lord. When the waves of death. When the waves of death compass me. Do you know what this compass surrounds me and overshadows me? When the waves of death. The floods of ungodly men made me afraid. 
And God's Spirit was on the deep, on the waters, on the floods. And there became a separation between flood and floods, between water and water, upon deep, upon and deep. Raging waves, many waves, and seas, and waters. But thank God, 2 Samuel 22 verse 4 says, I will call upon the name of the Lord, because I have enemies. And this enemies is like water and floods. Job 38 verse 8. God wants to say to Job, listen, come here. Where were you when I created everything? Then we read that as only natural words. But Job is a prophetic word and book as well. Because all the books in the Old Testament is actually prophetic books. Although it is not Isaiah and Jeremiah and Amos and Haggai, that we call prophetic books. And then we call the Genesis and Exodus and those. It's not prophetic books. Oh boy, it is. All of them is prophetic books and prophetic words to explain Jesus Christ and what he will do to mankind. But we need to have teachers to see that and to teach that to us. That all over the Bible, when I look, I can see God's plan with mankind. And I hope you as well. Listen, Job 38 verse 8. Who shut up the heaven, the seas, behind doors, when it burst from the womb? What? Job, come here. God is speaking now. Listen to the words. Who shut up the seas? Who silenced the seas? You read it always, Job, as natural. I read it as prophetic words. Listen to the words. Listen. Who shut up the seas behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? Whoa. Womb. Woman, man, woman means man with a womb. Woman gives birth to seas. Who shut up the seas when it is birth through the womb? When I make the clouds it, it, its garments and wrap it in thick darkness. Now I cannot go now into that. But when I made the clouds, when natural men read Bible, they will say, oh the clouds. No. The clouds is also men. It's also men. Listen now. Another word for deep or waters is clouds. But this is the next sermon. Another sermon. I cannot go into that. But listen what he says. When I made the clouds, its garment, I clothe it with a shirt, a garment, and wrap it in thick darkness. All right, so here's the deep and the water. And it's empty, it has been covered with darkness. But listen now. Then the Spirit of the Lord come. And over over this place. It was covered with darkness. Then the darkness is away because God says let there be light. But another word for light is thick darkness. Am I too fast for you? I hope not. Listen. Alright. So this is a place empty and void. And God wants to indwell that place. This is called deep. This is called water. But there was darkness over it. Then God's spirit over and he says, let there be light. That's the same place where God took his hand and covered us. And placed his words within men. And separate water from water. Believers from unbelievers. Now it says, when I made the clouds and garment put clothes around them and wrap them in thick darkness. 
Why would I say thick darkness is a light? And it's different from darkness. All right? When you read Bible and you read about darkness, be careful. Darkness can mean dark, just darkness. But when you read about thick darkness, it speaks of glory and light. All right? Well, give me a charge. Just give me a charge. When I fix limits for it and set it as doors and bars in its place. I'm still speaking on 38 verse 8 about the seas. Who has limits? Who has doors? Who burst out of, out of a womb? See, mankind come out of a womb. I make clouds. This water is also clouds. And I will put thick darkness over them. Spirit will hover over you. Then, when I fix limits for it and set it as doors and bars in its place, I will come and separate water from water and put limits between water and water. In the beginning, God created and then he separated water from water. And he would put a firmament. Firmament. Yes, that word. All right. It means a limit, a, a, a barrier between water and water. Now listen what Job says. I fix limits for it. Still speaking of the waters coming through a womb. And put bars in its place. When I say, this far you may come and no further. Listen to that words. You can come this far and not further. I'm going to write that down. Here is where your proud wives halt. Here is where the proud wives halt. There is wives. There's water, there's sea. When you are proud, God put a limit upon you. And there you halt. You are water coming through a womb. But you have bars and limits and doors. You halt there. And I'm going to write, write, write this down. What is that word that I say? That I said I, I, I need to uh, write down. Fix limits for its doors and its place. When I say this is far, you may come and no further. Here is where the proud waves halt. Now I can't remember that word. All right. First Kings eight verse twelve. Solomon made a temple for God to indwell, and in the day of dedication of this temple. All right. The priests want to come in this temple and worship God. But before that, God's glory came and filled the house. So the priests stood outside and they could not go in to minister to man. The day of dedication when Solomon built the temple. Listen now. So the priests could not do the service because God's glory God's light. Glory means light. Great splendor light filled the house. Listen now. It says, Then spake Solomon. He wants now to explain to the people why the priest cannot enter into the glory or the light. The Lord said that he would dwell in thick darkness. If you read now, Further, I'm not going to read it. You can read it. It says, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the light of God filled the house. God's presence was in the house. And then Solomon says, ah, the Lord says he stays in thick darkness. God is light and he stays in thick darkness. That thick darkness, that covers the previous verse, that covers the seas and the waters is the light of God that covers men. So darkness is away. Now thick darkness is over us. And that is God's glory. Psalm 42 verse 6. 
My God, my soul is downcast within me. Listen now, my soul is within me. It is downcast. It's not like a, it's downcast within me, in me, my soul. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of Jordan. Jordan is where water wa was. All right. I will remember Jordan, water. The heights of Haman from Mount Mizar. Mizar. Mount Mizar. The heights. The water. Jordan. Because I'm downcast in my heart and in my soul. Verse 7. That was verse 6. My soul is downcast. Verse 7. Listen. Deep calls to deep in roar of your waterfalls. Why would he talk now about deep calls unto deep? He just said, my soul is downcast. So the deep is the soul within men, is downcast. And is full of darkness. Darkness was on the face of the deep. Then the Spirit of the Lord came and make it thick darkness over the deep and the waters. And now Psalm 42 says, The deep is my soul in men, calleth unto the deep. The waters here is calling to the waters there. Because God is also water. I will give you freely of the water of life. And the Holy Spirit is like water that will be in you a spring of living water. That is why it says deep call unto deep in roar of your waterfalls. In roar. Who roars? The waterfalls. Who is the waterfalls? <laughs> Men. Men are waterfalls, roar of, oh, Jesus. This is what happened. And we roar to the water, the deep in the downcast of our soul. We roar of to the deep. The separation between us and God. The water and the water. First we are covered with darkness. But now, thick darkness is over us. The glory of the Lord will be upon men. We will be burst out of a womb. And we will be roaring waves. And other people that are unbelieving, they are also waves. That is enemies. But thank God we bless the Lord. He is our shield and our Lord. And they will not have their way upon us. Deep calls unto deep a roar of, of your waterfalls. And your waves and breaks have swept over me. God's water has swept over me. Because he is also water. His spirit. In the Bible is spirit water. It swept over me. His spirit is swept over me. Revelation 1 verse 12, this is my last scripture. I want you to hear. Revelation 1 verse 12, 13 and 15. Now John was on the day of the Lord. Alright, the day of the Lord, when the Lord came to mankind, yeah. And John was here. And he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. The Lord, when he was birthed, until he went into the cloud. So, what John saw was on the Lord's day, and John says, I heard a voice. Listen now, it says, verse 12, And I turned to see that the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Candlesticks is now the church, 
And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. So the Son of Man is Jesus Christ. And he's in the middle of the candlesticks where, where John says is the seven churches. Listen, who is light. So Jesus is now in the midst of the candlesticks. Verse 15. And it says, And his feet was like unto fine brass. I cannot go into deepness now there. As if they were burned in a furnace. It was. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So listen. Look to my boy. When I heard that voice and I turned around to hear who is speaking, I saw Jesus Christ in the midst of his church. And Jesus Christ is the Lord of the church. The church is the body of Christ. Listen, and his voice, I was in the spirit on the day of the Lord. Look here, on the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is when the Son of Man came to do something to mankind. And His voice was like many waters. What waters? It was not like water. It, like, it was like many waters. That many waters means that Jesus Christ was alone and He came and He joined Him to men who were water. In the day of the Lord, God reconciled man to God. In the day of the Lord, God made His water combined with our water. The deep has called unto deep. And God heard and He reconciled the deep with the deep. Alright? Then, because we roareth like waves. Because our enemies, the unbelievers, is also like water and waves. But thank God, God is in our sight. Now it says, and his voice were like many waters. This is awesome because this means when Jesus Christ revealed himself to John, it is he to show John that his voice is already being mingled with us. Because it's about the day of the Lord and the oneness and reconciliation. Alright, I hope you can hear that. Then it starts off, I, 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 then it says, Revelation 4 verse 1, the last scripture. I hear the voice. His voice is like many waters because I'm on the day of the Lord where God made the waters and the waters being one. Now Jesus Christ is not one anymore. He's a many-membered man. He is a Lord and the head and his body is the church and the waters is within us, the deep and the waters with him. And now when he speaks, it is we speaking, he is speaking. And when he is speaking, we are speaking. When we are speaking, he is speaking. And that is what John heard. Like many waters. Now, listen. After this, look and behold, the door was opened. This is the door. Jesus Christ is the door of mankind. It was opened because he opened it. And it says... And the first voice, because Jesus is the first brethren, now he is called the first voice. His voice is many waters, but the first voice of this many waters says, As it were as of a trumpet talking to me, which said, So who is speaking now? I saw the door is open, I hear his voice, it's many waters. But the first water, the first word, voice says the following, Come up hither, come up hither, or come higher, the same. Come up higher, come up hither. And I will show you 
things which must be here after. Come up hither. Let's stop there. Let's go back here. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That means he created mankind, man. Earth is man and heavens is man. Because I will put my mouth, my words in their mouth and then I will create the heavens and the earth. Yes, you read Genesis 1 as a natural and it's all right. But it's also a prophetic word and it, that is the power. There is the power when you read Bible in a prophetic language and with the Spirit of God. Then God says, the deep is man, it is water. But I'm going to make a separation between water and water. Between the living and the believing and the unbelieving. By hovering with my Spirit upon the deep. Those who accept my spirit and the light, that I say, let there be light, can call now from the deep and to the deep. From the deep to the height. And that's why John heard a voice of many waters calling him and say, I hope you can hear what I'm saying. Can you hear what I'm saying? Mm. He hear a voice and say, come up hither, come up hither. So our, our voice, our soul is the deep, God divided, can be full of God's glory and thick darkness and light. And our voice and our words can call unto the deep. And when we call unto God, God will call us up unto him up to a higher place and a higher dimension to speak like he is speaking then when we speak he is speaking and that is why his voice sounds like many waters thank god for protection against the waves and the seas of men but we are roaring with god's voice in our mouth i hope you can see it go and listen to it again May God bless you this morning. Amen and amen.